Good morning. My name is Scott Harper, president of the Greater Conroe Lake Conroe Area Chamber of Commerce. I would like to welcome you to our show today, Mind Your Business, where your host, Cassandra Rosen, our Director of Membership Development, will sit down with our great chamber members and talk history, community involvement, and share some what's new info about their company or organization. I hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to Mind Your Business, the afternoon radio show where I sit down with local business leaders to get the inside scoop of who they are, what they do, and what has made their company successful. I am your host, Cassandra Roshan, Director of Membership Development for the Greater Conroe Lake Conroe Area Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber is a nonprofit organization with the mission of serving the Conroe, Willis, Montgomery, and the Woodlands communities to improve economic development and quality of life. The Chamber is made up of over a thousand members of these business communities. The Chamber provides various monthly networking events, educational seminars, cost-effective marketing opportunities, as well as finds ways to give back to the communities we serve. The Chamber has been in business for business for over 80 years. And of course, we have another great lineup today that you won't want to miss. Our first guest is actually a duo. We have the uh, Dooley brothers, Sean and Ryan, here with us today. How are you guys doing? Awesome. Doing great. Thank you. Thanks for taking time out of your schedules. I know you have a lot going on. Um, But before we get into the hard-hitting questions, tell us a little bit about yourselves. Well, I'll start. My name is Ryan Dooley. I grew up in the Woodlands, went to school at Texas A&M, graduated in 2010, and came back to work in real estate. Uh, I'm actually a realtor, have my realtor's license, and joined my brother in uh, La Jolla Homes Construction and Dooley Properties, Property Management and Rentals in 2013. And actually, I am married, and I have a baby boy, 11-month-old. And we were talking before we started recording that uh, when he gets old enough, you're going to take him to Disney World, right? That's right. That's definitely <laughs> planned in the future. Got to take him to that uh, or uh, Disneyland, one or the other. But I heard, uh, according to you, Disney World is definitely the place to go. Yeah. It's bigger, better. And <laughs> and go to Universal because I know you said your wife likes Harry Potter. And so you have Heck to Heck yeah. There. After you uh, rep that Harry Potter ride, you got to go take that. <laughs> My sound effects. That's what really did it for you. I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, Sean, how about you? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, my name is Sean Dooley. Um, I'm suffering from a little bit of a cold right now, so you have to bear with me for a little while. Um, I went to Texas A&M, uh, class of 2006. Um, I got a degree in construction science, a minor in business. And then as soon as I graduated, I got thrown into the fire working for the family company. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we decided to start La Jolla Homes. And, um, and that's what, that was about 2007 so when we started that. And so since then, I've been I've been working with that. And then Ryan joined in in uh, 2013 to do sales and marketing. So, and he's single. <laughs> yeah, and that ready to mingle. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know Dick uses our young professionals group to uh, pick up ladies, so you can do the same thing. So. It's perfect. Is that why you're a part of it? Uh, partially, yes. <laughs> Watch out for these two. <laughs> so, um, I mean, working. How did you two end up working together or going into business together? Just because being brothers and you get along, or what? Yeah, I'd say that's pretty much it. Uh, I mean, like he said, it's a family business, so we kind of fell into it. And La Jolla Homes was something that he started, and he's been growing for the past few years. We uh, actually do enjoy getting along. Although in high school, there was a little tension. I was just the annoying yeah. little brother, but. I think I that it. faded a little bit in college, <laughs> and so we uh, kind of started to hang out a little more and enjoyed uh, hanging out and uh, and uh, definitely working in business, and it's seems to work pretty well so far, so we'll keep it going and see what happens. Sean is shaking his head when you said that you were the annoying little brother, and now that's gone away. He was shaking his head. Is he still the annoying little brother? No, no. I love him more now, but... <laughs> Yeah, in, in high school it was definitely uh, definitely some conflict. I, I well, I'm the I have an older sister, and so I think it was it was the same thing. I was the annoying little sister. I just want to hang out with my sister and her friends. And but he's he's much cooler now. <laughs> That's just the role you pick up. I think when you're the younger sibling, That's you right. have to be annoying. I mean, you have to annoy him a little. That's bit. right. That's our role. That's our <laughs> job. Um, so working for the company, I know you two have very different roles. What do each of you do? So I stepped in uh, for sales and marketing. Uh, Like I said, I'm a real estate agent already with uh, KW or Keller Williams. And so uh, that's kind of been my uh, natural step. And uh, my degree was in psychology. So I've kind of enjoyed figuring out marketing and sales Mm -hmm. and getting to talk to people. That's been a lot of fun. 
Uh, and Sean? Um, I'm the project manager, so I get my boots dirty. I'm the guy that's walking around in the mud all day. Yeah, he has the tough job. <laughs> but uh, um, And basically watch the job, schedule the jobs, you know. Basically, the purchase orders, the whole the whole deal, all Make the, sure it gets the technical built. side of it, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And you just came from one of the sites, right? Mm-hmm. I did just a couple of minutes ago. Yeah. Is it too cold out there to do that right now? No, it's perfect outside. <laughs> <laughs> when it gets down to 19 degrees in the morning, that's when it's too cold. Then, then there's a different... Yeah, that's what gave me this cold. Oh, uh, yeah, that happens. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> and tell me the difference. Now, I know there's Julie Properties and La Jolla Homes. What, what do each of these companies do then? So Dooley Properties is a property management company. They own and uh, manage uh, about 50 or 60 uh, rental properties across Conroe and the Woodlands. Uh, And La Jolla Homes is a custom home or spec home builder in Montgomery County. And they build not only uh, single family residential houses, but also duplexes, multifamily units. Uh, And so we're trying to grow that brand into uh, right now our price range is about one to two, uh, mm-hmm. 100 to 200,000. Uh, we built in Chateau Woods, Pinewood Forest, and uh, we're starting in Montgomery County uh, or Montgomery rather at Buffalo Springs. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so that price range we're trying to step up into 200, mm-hmm. 300. And eventually the goal would be to uh, build in higher half million and up because that would be a heck of a lot of fun. <laughs> Absolutely. And so with the with Dooley Properties, um, have you seen an increase as far as like the rentals go? And are, are you doing like apartment complexes or single family homes or how does that work? We do duplexes. So you have basically a house and it's separated in the middle. So there's two living units. There's one on mm-hmm. each side. We do those and we also do single family residential houses. So just regular houses as well. We don't do any apartments. Uh, we haven't done those in a while. Uh, but the duplexes we have off of Woodland Hill, we have about 40 units there and we're building 16 wow. more, uh, right now. That's where Sean just came from. He's building, he has 16 under construction right now, but, uh, those are pretty much full. We have, I think almost hundred percent occupancy. Uh, and so we're doing pretty good with those and, uh, yeah, it's a great business to be in, uh, no matter what the, uh, no, no, no matter what the economy is like here in Montgomery County or the Houston everyone needs area, a house. <laughs> everyone needs a place to stay and rentals are always great. Yeah. And I'm sure I know with a lot of other realtors that I speak with, they say that a lot of them have rental properties that they invest in as well. And they just can't even keep them on the market because it's so hot right now as mm-hmm. far as rentals go. Yep. And so the, the rentals that you have are those ones that you are, I guess, Sean has built um, mm. or are there ones that you've purchased from other most of them are ones that Sean's built. Uh, he's built a large majority of them. The uh, we have been purchasing some uh, lately. We uh, purchased some in Pinewood Forest, one of our neighborhoods, off of twenty eight fifty four. And uh, but mainly it's the townhomes that we uh, that makes up a majority of our mm-hmm. rental pool. And those townhomes are kind of higher end. Uh, they come with uh, all your free lawn care, front and back. I'm, I'm doing a sales pitch right now. Yeah, free now you lawn sold care. me right there. <laughs> <laughs> free lawn care, front and back, and all your appliances, and uh, plus the full size washer and dryer, uh, and then quarterly pest control and uh, full size uh, garage as well. So it's a nice little option for people looking to upgrade from apartments or right. uh, maybe trying to sell their house and don't know what they want to do for the next couple of years. Mm-hmm. It's a great place to stay. Absolutely. And so, um, do you guys manage just I'm, I'm guessing Dooley Properties, like you are the landlords per se then for that. You do take in the rent and, mm-hmm. and all of that. Yeah. So we have two ladies at our office that uh, manage those properties on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Uh, they take care of the calls, complaints, anything that we may have, <laughs> uh, they'll take care of no it. No complaints. So. No one yeah, ever complains. Exactly. Because it's Never, so great. It's perfect. Uh, <laughs> so they take care of that. And uh, Sean takes care of the construction. And I take care of the renting, leasing, and uh, marketing for mm-hmm. them. So, Sean, what is it like for you? Because I can only imagine, like, I remember when I was in, like, middle school and, you know, you build things and shop class and all that. I always thought it was so cool. And my parents still have the cribbage board that I made. Um, and th- I'm, like, so proud of this. And that was just a cribbage board. So what is it like for you building, I mean, something, uh, a home out of nothing? I mean, it's uh, it gives me a great sense of satisfaction to see something, you know, have a start and an end. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you, you see something go up from just dirt to an actual structure that's going right. to be there for decades. You know, you'll be able to come back and see it, you know, 20 or 30 years later and it's still going to be there. So, I mean, it's a great sense of satisfaction to see it, you know, finally complete and then move on to the next project. And so, do it all over again. Yeah, and do it all over again. <laughs> exactly. And I know 
since you're on the sales side, Ryan, I mean, do you get to see the people that end up moving into the home and love the home and enjoy the home? Oh yeah, I usually I usually do the uh, initial walkthrough okay. with the buyer. You know, when we do a custom or we do right. a, a spec home that we sell, I'm I'm the one that does the walkthrough, so I get to you know kind of brag a little bit, you know, and, <laughs> and show them you know their new house and all the little features and intricacies. Right. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and so, I mean, there's, like you were saying before, Ryan, there's, the, mar- the market is booming. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of other home builders and property management companies around. So what sets you guys apart from everyone else? Um, well, for Dooley Properties, uh, like I said, the one thing that sets us apart is the townhomes uh, that we build are uh, kind of higher end. They offer a lot of uh, extra amenities with mm-hmm. them that you don't find in normal uh, single family houses that maybe, you know, mom and pop bought and want to rent it out, you know, just managed by one single family. Uh, so we offer a lot in terms of the rental. Uh, and then also you get your fully fenced backyard, uh, and your one car attached garage as well. So that's kind of what sets Dooley properties apart. Uh, the other thing for La Jolla homes, uh, as a custom home builder, I mean, there's several things that, uh, set La Jolla homes apart. And, Number one would be that uh, our homes, we offer a lot of standard features that mm-hmm. other builders in our price range might consider an upgrade. Uh, right. And so we offer those, uh, for instance, granite countertops or 42 inch uh, uh, upper cabinets mm-hmm. in the kitchen, um, five inch baseboards, on and on and on. And then we throw in a great insulation package and uh, we make sure the house is built very well. Yeah, and when we, when we do the exterior of the house, I mean, my main concentration is what's behind the walls as well. I mean, right. When we do the exterior of the house, we sheet the whole house in, in OSB, you know, whereas most of the builders, and usually no matter what the price range, they usually don't do that uh, up here anyway. You know, they just put tar paper or they put, you know, some mm-hmm. kind of paper on the outside and then Call put the siding <laughs> or the brick on top of that instead of actually making it structurally sound and putting, you know, the half inch, you know, OSB or plywood around it. What is OSB? It's just an oriented strand board. It's, it's similar to plywood. But better. Um, but, well, I wouldn't say it's better. It's it's an equivalent. Gotcha. Okay. So. And then, I, I'm sorry, continuing <laughs> on with La Jolla, <laughs> with La Jolla Homes, uh, the other thing would be that we're also, we do everything in-house. So mm-hmm. we take care of uh, the client when they need financing. We go with our affiliate, uh, MidAmerica Mortgage. Uh, we have a partner there that we work with, uh, and we also uh, can do the procurement of the land. I'm a realtor, so I can help them find the land. We also have a development company, Terra Firma Development Corporation, yeah. that'll develop the land for them and take care of that. Uh, so we do it all in-house, and then designing, planning, and then construction as well. And so it's uh, kind of your one-stop shop for La Jolla. Yeah, which is great because it can be confusing and really stressful and mm-hmm. remembering which conversations you have with who and who you have to go to for, like you're saying, all the, the different for the financing and the getting the land and then the construction. And mm-hmm. it, it can be a lot. It is. So that's it's nice that you can just go to one place mm-hmm. and get it taken mm-hmm. care of. Yep. <laughs> great. Um, and, I mean, I know you guys have been in – you went to school for this industry and been in it for a couple of years. So since you started, how has the industry changed over time? Uh, well, I mean, when I came on board, we were still in the recession, I guess. I mean, it was still pretty slow. Mm -hmm. And when Sean came on board, really, that's when it kind of started in 2007, when he was trying to start up La Jolla. Um, really the biggest thing that we've seen change is, uh, and this has gone past, I mean, probably the past couple of decades, it's just the house has been, uh, increasingly more energy efficient, uh, more insulated, and so uh, better products are used. And that's what we're trying to uh, develop in our company and stay ahead of is those trends. We're trying to read up on articles and pay attention to buyer trends and right. make our homes more energy efficient and uh, so we can save the customer money. Right, yeah. And it's just staying ahead of the curve and making sure, like you said, it's what's important to the customer. Mm-hmm. So you're not just guessing and hoping it's right. You already know before they right. get there. And trying to pick plans that have a you know a distinct elevation to them. I mean, a lot of the builders up here uh, use elevations that looks like, you know, a house that was built in the 90s and they just yeah. keep duplicating <laughs> the same thing over and over again and maybe change a roof pitch or add a gable to it. And, you know, it looks pretty much the same as mm-hmm. the one across the street. So, I mean, we really try and, you know, stretch out and really make a, an attractive, you know, elevation as long as well as an attractive, you know, floor plan. Yeah, the house. absolutely. That's awesome. And before we take a short break, um, and as far as the company goes, what are the primary focus areas for the company and then also for the future? 
Um, primary focus areas uh, would definitely be on customer service. Uh, we're, we're trying to, uh, basically with customer service, uh, or with building rather, uh, it's not a recurring revenue business. Whereas right. say insurance sales, for instance, you have customers that renew their policy every year with building, construction, or real estate in general you're looking for a client every year. You're trying to reboot sales for that year. So mm-hmm. focusing on customer service, we wanna make sure the customer is satisfied in the beginning of the transaction, during and after the transaction, uh, so that and years after the transaction, so that they'll come back to us and they'll brag to their friends about their new home while they're showing it off at parties and stuff right. and so forth. So they'll come back to us and give us referrals and help grow that business uh, that way. And then also another focus would be the uh, energy efficiency, the technology in the house, uh, trying to stay ahead of those trends and mm-hmm. uh, look at what's popular and implement those into our uh, custom homes and spec homes. Yeah, because I think as we move forward, that's going to become even more important. Oh, definitely. That, that efficiency of a home. Oh, yeah, <laughs> with, you know, uh, wallets tightening and the economy and mm-hmm. things like that. That's oh, that's a huge deal. Yeah, uh, absolutely. absolutely. Well, great. Uh, Like I said, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we will hear more about getting involved in the community and business advice from Sean and Ryan Dooley. Stay with us. Let's go to Luke in my Texas. Tired of Waylon, Willie, and the boys? Join me, Gordon Lockhart, for Beethoven, Bach, and the boys. Every Saturday from 8 to midnight, on Lone Star Classical Music After Dark. Symphonies, concertos, and sonatas by composers such as Mozart, Tchaikovsky, and Bernstein. That's Lone Star Classical Music After Dark. Every Saturday from 8 to midnight on IRLoneStar.com. Hi, I'm Margie Taylor with Montgomery County Emergency Assistance, urging you to get involved with what's going on in your community. Homelessness, poverty, and hunger are on the rise in Montgomery County. At Montgomery County Emergency Assistance, we provide emergency help to families experiencing an unexpected crisis with rental utilities, food, and clothing. There are several ways to get involved. You can visit our website at mcea tx.org to make a tax deductible donation, volunteer at one of our events, advocate for the cause, or sign your company up to sponsor a family or an event. MCA's philosophy is it takes a village and we welcome your support. Contact me, Margie Taylor, at 936-539-1096 and join our team today. Thank you. Montgomery County Emergency Assistance, helping families to help themselves. Welcome back to Mind Your Business, the monthly radio show where I, your host, Cassandra Roshan, Director of Membership Development for the Greater Conroe Lake Conroe Area Chamber of Commerce, interview chamber members to find out who they are, what they do, and what has made them sick, them successful in their business. And we are back with uh, Sean and Ryan Dooley, the uh, owners of Dooley Properties in La Jolla Homes. We just heard all about their business and a little bit more about them. And so now we're going to talk about how they are involved in the community. Um, I know that you guys are your Ruby members in the chamber. You're one of our newest Ruby members, so one of our higher level investors. Um, but so, why do you feel that it's important to support and then give back to the community? Um, well, I mean that's uh, that's a good question. Uh, I mean it's something that uh, we feel that you should just be. Yeah, we we were given opportunities uh, to to do certain things to accomplish our dreams and our goals um, by. Our parents, mm-hmm. uh, by uh, we were fortunate enough to have parents that could help us out, uh, send us to college, and so forth. And uh, we truly believe that it's just uh, our opportunity now to give back to our neighbors, our friends, and allow them, if they don't have that, uh, or they don't have those opportunities, to allow them to have those opportunities to chase their dreams and their goals, and to give back to treat your neighbor as uh, you would want to be treated. Yeah, absolutely. And I suppose, I mean, basically your residences essentially are your neighbors. And so they're Mm -hmm. supporting the community that they're they're living in and that you are bringing them to, Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure is is important as well. And so what are the different organizations that you are a part of? Um, So we just joined the chamber, as you mentioned, uh, and that's been awesome. We've really enjoyed getting to connect with that. And uh, 
We also joined a few months ago the uh, GHBA or Greater Houston Builders Association, and so we've been pretty heavily involved in that as well. And uh, right now, there's just those two organizations, and um, I think that's all we have time for <laughs> as far as uh, getting in, getting involved and in, uh, being active in anything, at least. Yeah, and that's the thing because there's so many different organizations, nonprofits, or I mean, even networking groups that you can be part of, and you could spend your entire work week just mm-hmm. going to different networking events or going to different events or supporting different groups that you don't have time to get yeah, you wouldn't have time job. to work <laughs> exactly yeah. you wouldn't be building any homes because you'd be too no. busy networking yeah. that's exactly but, it. i mean ryan's been doing a great job getting us involved and stuff and i've, I've enjoyed going to uh, uh, all the meetings as well yeah i know you've been to our young professionals meetings i think you've been to it was an after hours event or a few different things with the chamber mm-hmm. um and so talk a little bit more about the the builders association what what exactly is that and how are you involved there the greater houston builders association is basically just what the name says it's where all the uh, builders or any builder that wants to um i guess give back to the community and also get involved uh, with other builders mm-hmm. and meet other contractors and people involved in the building industry. That's where they can join. And that involves Houston and greater Houston. I mean, it, it, there's a thou- over a thousand, I think, builders and uh, right. oh, associates, sure yeah. associates with uh, GHBA. And so um, we get to go to all kinds of stuff with them, the golf tournaments, the, I mean, pretty much the same stuff that the chamber would, would do uh, yeah. is what GHBA sponsors, the barbecue cook-offs, right. uh, community events, whatever, whatever you can think of, you name it, GHBA does it. And so is that where you find like, um, no, you're, I know you do a lot of things in house as far as, you know, the building side goes, but is that where you find the different contractors? And I know you were talking about plumbers, electricians and, all that is that where you find those uh, individuals well it's it's interesting um usually when you go to those meetings it's it's really neat to see some of the uh, vendors that show up you uh-huh. know they, they bring their new products and you get to discuss it with them face to face instead of you know calling on the phone and mm-hmm. and you get to actually you know handle the products and that's where we kind of get introduced to new construction materials and methods sometimes mm-hmm. and uh and then it's also as well it's good networking i mean you get to meet you know other builders and you know ask mm-hmm. them questions and, right yep and uh and other subs yeah, I'd say GHBA is good for networking with other builders. It's not necessarily there to uh, grow your business in terms of new customers. Right. Uh, whereas that's what the Chamber of Commerce is good at, is meeting mm-hmm. co- meeting neighbors or meeting people around here in Conroe and Montgomery County that are looking to build. But So that's kind of what differentiates, yeah. I guess, the two organizations and why we're involved in both. One right, is, a good balance. One is, yeah, exactly. One's to find contractors uh, or meet other network with other builders and get ideas or share ideas. And the other one is to grow our business uh, right. with clientele. Yeah. Well, you need both. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so when you are, when you're going to hire someone to do like your electrical or your plumbing or all that, how, I mean, how do you start building that relationship? Do you, I mean, do you meet with them, interview them and just kind of, or do you uh, just hope, hire someone and hope for the best? No, or? no, definitely not. Not because <laughs> I mean, there's, there are so many trades around here and I mean, there, there are a lot of bad ones and, and usually, yeah. you know, a few good ones and, in order to find those, I mean, my my main job is I go around, I drive around to different neighborhoods, I find houses where I, I've seen a really neat work. I, I can see inside the walls, I see what's been done, and then I try and track down the trade after Are you that. spying on people looking in their homes? <laughs> exactly. That's, he's, that's the creep, the, he's the that's creeper the, going by at midnight with the lights off. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the best I way to I think I've find. seen you in my neighborhood. I'm like, call the cops on you. No, I'm just kidding. That's, that's the best way to find good trades is to, is to go in and see their work. I mean, uh, they can tell you that they're good all, you know, all day long. But right. Until you see it, you, you just don't know. Right, right. Yeah. So if you see someone in black clothes looking in the windows, it's just you. Don't it's just be Sean. alarmed. Yeah. Just Sean. Sean, Sean's just doing investigative just, work. Yeah. That's all it just is. Just trying to find an electrician. That's all okay. I'm do. Don't well, call the cops. I feel much better about that now because I was a little concerned with what was happening in uh, my That's <laughs> funny. I love it. And so let's get into a little bit of business advice because you guys have been you know, really successful in, in both both entities. Um, what, in your opinion, has led to the success of Dooley Properties and La Jolla Homes? I would say... Um, I mean, it's really the environment here. I mean, it's the economy. I mean, Houston is, it's one of the top economies for real estate. I mean, it's a great real estate market and it's really driven by the oil and all mm-hmm. the businesses moving in and the corporations and the employees. And uh, and so that's really driven the success of our business. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's just great. I, I would like to say it's 
you know, it's our hard work, but I mean, it's just uh, every, I think everyone involved in real estate here has seen success. And mm-hmm. that's just because it's a, a great growth, environment right. for it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I mean, like we were talking before, there's a lot of different competition when it comes to real estate and building. So how do you stay relevant and ahead of the curve of everyone else when there's so many people moving in here and there's so many different options for them to go to? There are a ton of options and uh, there is a lot of builders out there. And uh, like I said earlier, one of the things we try to focus on is uh, is our customer service and then also uh, staying ahead of the curve in terms of uh, adding technology to our mm-hmm. houses, uh, whether it be insulation or uh, uh, what do you... I mean, it's... It, it basically comes down to, I mean, you have uh, in this area, you've got a lot of large builders that, I mean, really just produce cookie cutter houses. Right. And their their supervisors or superintendents that are out in the field are, are typically don't have a construction background. You know, they get a binder that shows them how to build a house and they follow that information inside that binder. And I think what sets us apart is, is we're a smaller builder. And with me being in the field, I watch and I supervise the construction of the house from beginning to end. You know, I'm the one that's out there telling the trades what to do, Mm -hmm. watching how they put it together. And I have a background in construction. I was trained to do this. Right. And I'm not allowing anybody else to do it for me. You know, I'm not hiring some kid straight out of high school to go out there and build your house. So, I mean, that's, I think that's one thing that really, that (laughs) really sets us apart, you know, is that we're small and, you know, our focus is on building that house. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's important because, I mean, there's so many different problems that can arise from even with building a new house if it's not constructed properly. Yeah. A lot, Mm -hmm. a lot can go wrong from bursting pipes or not being able to find this or that and foundations and all that. So. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that we have some experience. (laughs) Um, And I mean, business is full of success and learning opportunities. And I'm sure both of you can give different insight into this question. But what has been the biggest success and then also learning opportunity for each of you? Um, Biggest learning opportunity would probably be, uh, I guess, since Sean and I kind of entered the building market in a bad economy, uh, it's it wasn't the best place to grow a. Uh, it wasn't the best time. I'd say it's probably the best place in the in the country to build mm-hmm. a to build a building company or to grow a building company. Uh, but rather, it wasn't the best time. Um, and so, what we learned there was with our duly property side, the property uh, management rental side. We focused on that and growing that business and getting that, uh, building those townhomes. And uh, so that generated a lot of revenue to support La Jolla and uh, the other companies affiliated with us or partnered with us uh, during those rough few years in the recession. And so that's kind of, that was a good learning, growing experience Mm -hmm. for us was investing in the company in order to uh, keep us afloat during tough times when other builders are struggling and right it's tough to find clients uh, wanting to buy a house yeah we basically learned how to sharpen our pencil <laughs> you know in that in that intermediate period when when things kind of went downhill for a while i mean mm-hmm. it's i mean you really try and you know offer as many features and amenities as you can for the price you know and and you know not worry about exactly you know what the profit you're making but just try and sell the house make the people happy with the house and right because they want a value yeah, you know they want and a value and, and it was even more of a concern when the economy went down I mean, mm-hmm. you had to really produce something you know incredible mm-hmm. um, yeah you know for them to, to be attracted to it because people right. weren't, weren't buying at all yeah absolutely and so from a building side what would be the biggest learning opportunity for for you sean on the building side, I mean, every day is a learning opportunity. I mean, I, I wouldn't say there's there's a day that goes by I don't I don't learn something new or see some new technique you right. know, that that I I'd, I'd like to incorporate into something. I mean, I think it's um, I think it's you're constantly learning in construction. I don't think you you ever get to a point where you just you know you do it the same you know every time and just call it quits. Well, and that's that's what you want, like we were saying before, in a builder, someone who's yeah. going to be staying with trends and, and knowing the best way of how to how to build or how to do things. Um, so then you're always having the most modern, up to date, efficient home. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's good. That's really good. Um, and before uh, we go to our, our break and we when we wrap up with you two, each of you tell me one piece of business advice that you feel is important for every business owner to know. Um, hmm. Um, I would say, and this isn't coming from me. I read this in an article. So. <laughs> <laughs> and it spoke to you. <laughs> well, it did. Uh, this is something that I, I catch myself doing a lot of times. And it's, 
uh, putting things off that uh, I don't necessarily like to do or I mm-hmm. don't enjoy or maybe I'm not good at. And uh, for me, that's uh, doing cold calling or uh, I just I hate doing that. And so um, I'll put that off as long as I can. Uh, I don't want to get that done. And so what the article was saying was, you know, do the tough things first get whatever you hate doing, whatever you don't like doing, get those done first. And then you'll enjoy the easy tasks later. Get those done first thing in the morning. And then you won't have those on your mind or waiting on your shoulders for the rest of the day. And yeah. sometimes those tough things, the things you hate doing, are actually the things that are going to make you the most money. Mm-hmm. So, And uh, for me, it would be just um, listening to the customers. I mean, doing walkthroughs in houses. I mean, you, you hear, because I mean, being a builder, you have a different perspective when you look at a house right. than, you, than a customer does. And and listening to the customer when you do a walkthrough and kind of seeing what they're looking at and what they're thinking about when they see that. And then, you know, taking that advice and incorporating it into the next house that you do and maybe changing it a little bit so that, you know, that perception is different, you know, when they see it. You know, even though it might be something that's perfectly fine, they're seeing it and they think something's wrong, <laughs> but it's really not wrong. You right. Know? And, and basically just paying attention to how the customers view things is is probably one of the things that, that I've learned. So when you do those walkthroughs and everything with a customer and they, um, and they make those, I guess, comments or suggestions or complaints and you, in your head, you're just thinking like, no, you're so wrong. Like, what are you talking about? I mean, how, how do you work through something like that? I mean, typically I, I try to explain it to them, you know, and some people will take that, you know, one way or the other, mm-hmm. you know, some people, you know, understand what I'm saying. And then some people have no idea cause they don't, you know, have a background in construction. So you, I mean, you just kind of have to work with it. Yeah. And explain it as best as you can. Right. So. Yeah, I could imagine that would that could be a challenge yeah. in building. Well, great. Well, thank you guys so much. And if someone is interested in uh, any of your rental properties or um, you know getting having you guys build a home for them, how do they reach out to you? So they can go to our websites, uh, DooleyProperties.com or La Jolla Home, uh, MyLaJolaHome.com. Uh, or they can just call me on my cell phone, and I give that out freely. It's 713-702-6886. And then if uh, we have any listeners that are looking to connect with your brother, I know you're saying he was single. They just need to call you, too. <laughs> He's on all the yeah. dating websites. <laughs> I'll, I'll let Ryan screen him for me. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Well, again, thank you guys so much for uh, spending the, this time with me, and uh, look forward to seeing you at more events and out in the community and uh, stay with us so when we come back we'll have another fabulous guest hi this is erica tellis executive director of the breast cancer charities of america the breast cancer charities of america is a national nonprofit organization with our headquarters in the woodlands texas we focus on non-invasive breast cancer research and helping the true patient that is going through breast cancer Through our Help Now Fund, we help women pay the rent and utilities while going through their breast cancer treatment. It's unlike any other program that truly is out there. We are here to help the woman. Our phone number is 936-231-8460. For more information or to get involved or to even make a donation, please visit our website, www.igopink.org. I'm Bonita DeRosa, Animal Control Officer for the City of Willis. We invite you to tune in to Lone Star Internet Radio every first and third Thursday of the month at 11 a.m. for the Willis Hour. On the first Thursday of the month, the Willis Hour will be covering upcoming events and news about the city. Join in the conversation with your city officials and other leaders in the community. On the third, we will be doing a recap of the last city council meeting. The mission of the City of Willis is to provide high quality services, accountability, and professional commitment to our citizens. We pledge to provide those who live, work, and visit our city an effective government that is open and responsive to the needs and values of the community. Again, we invite you to tune in on Lone Star Internet Radio every first and third Thursday of the month at 11 for the Willis Hour. 
And welcome back to Mind Your Business, the monthly radio show where I, your host, Cassandra Roshan, Director of Membership Development for the Greater Conroe Lake Conroe Area Chamber of Commerce, interview chamber members to find out who they are, what they do, and what has made them successful in their business. We just heard from Sean and Ryan Dooley of Dooley Properties and La Jolla Homes, and now we are here with John Vanderkay with the Center for Mighty Marriages and Families. How are you doing this morning, John? You're doing great, Cassandra. How about yeah. you? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm doing Great. Thank you. And thanks for uh, taking time out of your day to be here with us. Uh, so we're going to dive right into some questions. Tell us a little bit about you, because I know you have a, a kind of an interesting background and in how you ended up where you are today. Yes. Well, I was a, a, a pastor for a few years before I was called to uh, be an active duty Air Force chaplain. I spent a career in the U.S. Air Force traveling all around. Um, and then uh, two and a half years ago, uh, retired uh, out of Great Falls, Montana, of all places <laughs> in northern Montana, and felt called to come back to Texas. Yeah. It's a little bit warmer. Called because of the temperature? <laughs> yeah. because of well, they kind of go together. Yeah. It was a, uh, I did, appreciated the snow for a little while. Yeah. Uh, and then appreciated not having the snow <laughs> right. a lot more. I understand uh, that. I grew up in Deer Park, Texas, you know, oh. in southeast Houston. Yeah. So that was home. My wife grew up in Conroe, and we had the option of being near family again. Right. Said, that would be great. Take that opportunity. family's here, right. running around. Um, and so we've been here about two and a half years and, and loving the area. And it's, it's grown quite a bit. Since, yeah, I was uh, going to say, how much change was there when you came back? Oh, lots and lots. <laughs> oh, my wife and I have been married 18 and a half years and uh, been dating for 20 years. So I've been coming to Conroe for 20 wow. years yeah. and seen in 20 years, Conroe's changed a little bit. <laughs> a little so, bit. Yeah. And I know you have, uh, you have several kids as well, right? Yes, we've got four kids. Uh, my oldest uh, will be 14. Uh, hard to wow. believe in, in March, uh, Danielle, and then Lydia's 11, and Tim is uh, 8, and Steve is 6. So two wow, girls and a, two boys. You a nice mix. Split down the middle, yes. <laughs> yeah. That's great. And um, so tell us a little bit about the Center for Mighty Marriages and Families. What, what exactly is it? Well, we're a, a uniting ministry. We say we're, as a Christian ministry, we try to uh, bring all the other agencies, churches, mm-hmm. uh, other parachurch organizations, community organizations that with the full focus of building up marriages and strengthening families and relationships. Uh, as I was traveling around the military and before I was in the military, I had a lot of my pastor friends who would tell me they do a lot of counseling, but not many of them have ever been trained on how to do that, and they're just doing the best that they could. Right. I had the, been blessed with the opportunity for a lot of training uh, before I went in, and then my Uncle Sam, thank you to all the taxpayers, <laughs> Gave me the opportunity to get a lot more training while I was in the military. And so I wanted to offer something to them. And yeah. I've been training in a resource for training people and how to do premarital counseling, how to do marriage counseling. And so I started a ministry called Mighty Marriages Ministry. Mm-hmm. The focus was on marriages, not just surviving, not just getting by, but that I believe God intended marriages to be something strong and mighty. And so I started that ministry holding uh, workshops for pastors and training them how to do marriage counseling and that and then it just kept widening from there while I was still on active duty uh, and then uh-huh. when I was uh, getting ready to retire from the military thinking what's next and I've loved marriage and family uh, and working in there but now the opportunity to do it full-time and so we launched we changed the name incorporated went through the process mm-hmm. to be uh, uh, 501c3 right and got a board and all that and when we moved down here started the center for mighty marriages and families as a place to do counseling uh, individual couples uh, family counseling mm-hmm. uh, being able to offer uh, workshops and teaching singles in fact one that we uh, started last year really excited to see growing is for our singles uh, either high school or young adult singles and teaching them about relationship skills how relationships are supposed to be done in right. healthy relationships. Not how they are in the movies or in Gossip Girls and all that. Right, <laughs> right. So we call it how to avoid falling for a jerk. Uh, because if any of us that have dated for more than two or three times, we probably have dated a jerk. If we didn't have an idea what a healthy relationship is supposed to be, and we tend to attract people that are like us. So if we're mm-hmm. healthy, we tend to attract healthy people. If oh, we're yeah. not, Good point. we tend to do the same. And so trying to teach and try to prevent a lot of relational problems by doing things right up front. So... Yeah. I'm currently in a relationship, so should I go to this to see if I am dating a jerk? Is that, is that I would recommend it. I'd, everybody who's not already married, as if you come to it and, and you're married and you realize, yeah, I'm married to a jerk. Then well, there's another there, problem. There's another set of issues we got to deal with on how do you deal with being married to a jerk because there's a few of them out there. But before you get to that point, because we believe at the point of marriage that there's something 
incredible that happens at a wedding ceremony and that as a Christian, that's a covenant that's formed at that point. Mm -hmm. And then it's until death. And that's why uh, one of our mottos and in fact our bumper sticker that you may see around town of what we believe about marriage is that it's one man, one woman, and it's for life. Uh, And so up to that point, there's always a point of return in relationships to say, if you find out, well, this is not somebody, he's got too many issues, let mm-hmm. him sort his issues out, and then we can think about marriage. So at any point up to that point where you commit the rest of your life to a person, you need to get to know them and find out, right? are they a jerk or not? <laughs> are they willing Before to deal with their that, issues? Yeah. Before you do, once you do, then I believe any, any two people can have a great marriage. Mm-hmm. That a man and a woman who want to have a great marriage can have it if they're willing to do the work that it takes. And that's what we're about, is helping them to be able to make it and not just survive. So many people had have an image of marriage that success is not killing each other or getting divorced. And if you've been married for 50 years and you haven't killed each other and you haven't gotten a divorce, right. that that's then success. Right, it's good. And it's almost the image of, of clawing your way across the finish line. And I believe that's not what God's intent was in marriage, is that you're not just don't kill each other and don't get divorced, but there's, there's something <laughs> much greater, much better than that, and allowing people to, to experience that and then pass it on. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's interesting that you say that because I know, like, you know, I'm not married yet. Angela Storseth in our office, she just got married this past July. Yeah. And I know, like, people talk to us all the time about, oh, you're getting married and just wait, you know, now you're in it for the long haul. And it's always, I feel like, this bleak outlook of what mm-hmm. marriage is. Rarely do I ever hear, did I ever hear her getting advice of, you know, now it gets even better. Right. It's always the opposite. Right. So it's good to hear your perspective on that, that no, now now the fun begins, that you're in this this lifelong commitment. Right. Well, you have a clue when you realize that, that it's not just wishing and hoping that it has good yeah. marriage. So when my wife Terry and I got married, we didn't have much of a clue. <laughs> uh, we were both Christians, but we assumed that that's enough, mm-hmm. that we were never taught how to have a, a healthy relationship. We were never taught how to communicate well, how to resolve conflict. Uh, and the first few years of our, of our marriage were uh, not that great. <laughs> In fact, I think we may have referred to it a time or two as hell on earth yeah. <laughs> uh, because we were constantly at each other's throat. Wow. We didn't know how to resolve it, and arguments tended to end when somebody overpowered the other. Mm-hmm, either. Mm-hmm. And that's just not real healthy. And once we started getting an idea. And is it we, mainly about communication then? Or what? How, how, is, how do you work on that conflict resolution? Is it, you, do you find that it's communication issues, or is it something else? Well, we believe that, and we found that healthy relationships have three foundations. Mm -hmm. They all have to be there, and they have to be in a specific order for a relationship to to thrive. The first and foremost is trust. Uh, Right. Without trust, you have no relationship, because that lets somebody come in close enough to be in a relationship. And when there's issues with trust that are unresolved, they keep you from going deeper in a relationship. Uh, But once you get to a certain point, really a point of, of safety in a relationship, where I don't have to fear my physical safety, then you can move to the second foundation, which is effective communication. Mm-hmm. You can't have effective communication without trust. Right. Because you're not going to talk about what really is going on. Because mm-hmm. I'm not going to hand you a weapon to right. use against me. It's just yeah. not wise. In fact, we coined the phrase, I saw it so much in my work with couples that I, I started using the phrase, the marriage Miranda rights, which <laughs> are kind of similar to regular Miranda rights, except they say you don't have a right to remain silent. Mm-hmm. But anything you say can and will be held against you in future arguments. Uh, and when couples pull out the marriage Miranda rights and say, yeah, I'm going to use this against you, it becomes much smarter to just shut up and don't say anything. Right. But then you can't have a great relationship mm-hmm. then. Uh, so once you have some effective communication, you know what the issues are, then you can move to conflict resolution because mm-hmm. you can't resolve a conflict if you don't know what it is. And too many right. couples, they're just, they're just fighting, but they don't ask, know well, why. what are you fighting about? I don't really don't know. Well, we haven't it's figured that out that. yet. Right. Oh, uh, man, yeah. that sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have, have to you, all of us. Have, have, you, have you been in my relationship? Have you analyzed that? Because, man, you're hitting some, some nails on yeah. the head there. Yeah. Well, and so um, going back, how long then has the center been, been around? I know where the idea kind of came from, but how long have you been in, in Conroe? Uh, two and a half years. We incorporated July of 2011 uh, here in Conroe, and so we've been here uh, for two and a half years. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. so you're, you're – you have your Very roots young. in the ground. Yeah, but yeah. still, yeah, a lot of growing to do. And I know you talked about the different services that you provide from the, the classes and the seminars and the counseling. Um, mm-hmm. But what sets you apart from other counseling organizations or, or companies? Well, one of the big things, and being small, and um, is the uniqueness and the extensive experience you mm-hmm. have. You know, there's a lot you can learn from studying and from going to school. But there's a lot of life that you have to experience and having been there. Right. Having been married and going through uh, a combat tour in Iraq 
and having my marriage stressed and strained by being in a war zone right. gives me a different perspective and being able to help others. Uh, going through natural disasters, we were in Biloxi, Mississippi for Hurricane Katrina. Wow. And we sheltered on base and were in shelter for 14 days uh, until, or eight days, I'm sorry, until we were able to evacuate out. Mm-hmm. And it was me and my family in there. And so going through the stresses and strains and seeing how does a relationship survive major stresses and strains uh, and thrive then on the other side. Mm-hmm. So the uniqueness of our experience is coming together. I'm finishing up my doctorate in marriage and family counseling. Oh. So I have the education side on there. Right. Uh, and then have been, I, now I say blessed with the other side, with the experiences <laughs> of real world experiences and how do you have a healthy relationship? How do you have a strong relationship right. that withstands what all of us experience at one time or another? Just th- this is, there's a hard life anytime. Bad things happen, mm-hmm. uh, even to good people. And how does a relationship last? And so with somebody coming to look to us, it's the compassion that's based in the real world. When right. I talk with people, I, I don't want to talk about theory, we talk about application mm-hmm. in their lives, what does it look like? Um, and I find that's somewhat unique. A lot of people have compassion, they have knowledge, um, but us putting it all together and saying that there's an ultimate goal is not just your survival, you know, but that thriving, something more than that. And I think it's, I mean, I think that's really great that you have that real life experience and you talk about the application of it because I think a lot of times that's where people maybe miss the boat mm-hmm. is is the application piece is that, well, you know, I've gone to counseling, I've done the talking thing, but now what? I didn't walk away with anything. So right. to have someone that's kind of been there and, and lived through struggles right. um, and can give that insight and perspective is, I think, really important. Yeah. Um, and I know that, you, you know, you're kind of new in, as far as having the center here in Conroe two and a half years, but um, with all your experience that you had previous and even now in Conroe, how do you, how has your industry changed over time? Well, on the, on the counseling side and especially on, on marriage counseling, you know, it's really over uh, the last few decades that it's even become uh, kind of its own entity mm-hmm. being able to focus and see that there's a difference between uh, marriage counseling and just counseling two individuals that there's a uniqueness that, mm-hmm. uh, between it's not just two individuals sitting in front of you it's two individuals and this third entity right. of a marriage that they create together uh, and an understanding of that and a seeing kind of a coming of age that dealing with the relationship as a whole and saying right. instead of it's not it's more just than pieces. the sum of its parts mm-hmm. and to see that trying to keep up with that understanding and understanding even the research that's uh, been done in the counseling side and then on conferences uh, changing those are always changing because right. it's, it's a lot of what's what hits people at the point of need at any one time uh, the technology is a big part of that right and, and the changing technology and the use of it and conferences and and that and that just keeps going on you can't stay still right you can't yeah. stop learning because right. you if you're going to progress and stay on trend then it's an important to to learn everything that's coming right. out um so. And then, so for, before we take a short break, I want to get to one more question. Um, you know, what are the primary focus areas for, for the company currently or for your organization currently and then also for the future? Well, a major focus now is on preventing relationship problems mm-hmm. by teaching how healthy relationships work. Right. Uh, it's empowering and also empowering people to live by them. It's more than just giving them a tool. It's to give them a tool and encouraging them and help them to practice it and then use it to live by uh, most exciting, like I mentioned, is helping out high school and young single adults, uh, bringing how to avoid falling for mm-hmm. a jerk and teaching them if we try to prevent relationship problems before they happen. Um, and doing that in church youth groups, doing that in, in high schools, mm-hmm. uh, Christian schools, public schools, and trying to teach those principles of healthy relationships. And that's pretty exciting and a major focus. So I love counseling, but if I can help somebody to not need to come in to yeah. that point because they are able to Preventative do it Preventative care, if you will. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, that's even better for me. Yeah, that's great. Well, thank you so much. Like I said, we're going to take a, a short break. And then when we come back, we'll get in uh, more into your community involvement and then get some business advice from uh, John Vander Cave with the Center for Mighty Marriages and Families. Stay with us. The Conroe Art League is a nonprofit entity promoting the visual arts in Montgomery County. They've evolved over the last 49 years into one of the premier artist groups in the greater Houston area. The Conroe Art League is now permanently housed in the 100-year-old, recently remodeled Maidley Building in historic downtown Conroe. Exhibits of local artists, sculptures, and painters are changed periodically in the downstairs gallery with admission free to the public. Art classes and demonstrations in a variety of media are provided in the upstairs studios. The mission of the Conroe Art League is to encourage artistic development 
and cultivate an appreciation of the visual arts through education, exhibitions, and community outreach. For more information, call area code 936-756-9572 or visit their website at www.conroeartleague.com. Oh, I'm Mark Hader. And this is Cindy Cochran inviting you to join us on the Cindy and Mark Show each weekday morning from 10 to 11 here on Lone Star Internet Radio. Super Cindy, but I believe it's the Mark and Cindy Show. Huh? Yes, it is, Mark. And it's broadcast live on Lone Star Internet Radio here in beautiful downtown Conroe. Oh, the exciting things we'll talk about, the interesting guests you'll get to meet, the wonderful gifts we'll give away, and the tons Wait, of- wait, wait. Gifts? There are no gifts. I'm not giving away anything. Why why do you get to decide on what we do? It's Mark and Cindy, remember? Oh, yeah? Well, so, ladies and gentlemen, tune in, and we'll all find out who gets to decide stuff. Weekday mornings at 10, here on Lone Star Internet Radio. How was that? It could have been worse. You could have sung your part. Oh, yeah, wait. It's the Mark and Cindy Show. The Mark and Cindy Cindy. Show. The Mark and Cindy Cindy. Show. The Mark and Cindy Show. Hi, this is Steve Scott, the Houston Business Coach. What is business coaching? Business coaching is about bringing accountability. Accountability is the key to shortening the time to accomplish what is valuable to you. Everything you do in business is part of a process. When you improve the process and add accountability, you will increase the odds of a successful outcome. And business coaching is for those individuals and companies who want to create pathways to accelerate the process of their successful performance. Regardless of what you wish to accomplish, seldom will your success exceed your personal development, your ability to grow your thinking. As a personal business coach, I take your goals and dreams, add some accountability, and help you close the gap between your intention and your results. To discover if personal business coaching is for you, call me at 281-376-2790. That's 281-376-2790. Or visit me at www.thehoustonbusinesscoach.com. And welcome back to Mind Your Business, the monthly radio show where I, your host, Cassandra Roshan, the Director of Membership Development for the Greater Conroe Lake Conroe Area Chamber of Commerce, interview chamber members to find out who they are, what they do, and what has made them successful in their business. Uh, We are here with John Vanderke with the Center for Mighty Marriages and Families. We just heard all about who he is and what he does and more about the center. Um, And so now we're going to get more into his community involvement. And I know that you're a very community based organization. So uh, tell us, John, why do you feel it's important to support and give back to the community? Well, that's that's in our DNA. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a Christian, and as a Christian organization, we're about relationships, and community is a, is a, is a web of relationships. Mm-hmm. And knowing that all of our supporters are given into us, they have a relationship with us, and us giving out, and giving out to the community, and giving out to to everybody and uniting people together. And I think it's important for for every business, but especially us at nonprofits and and faith-based organizations to say that we are here for the community. Yeah, absolutely. It's not just a little slice, (laughs) is that we believe everybody. And even though I'm a a Christian and we, our foundation is on Christian principles and, and that's out of our relationship with God that we're able to minister to others, People who have no faith, uh, people who are just in a crisis and they need some place to go, they need some help, they need somebody that they can trust. Mm-hmm. They can, and so we're able to reach out to the whole community, encourage uh, anybody who needs help to come in, in in the community, and then giving out in any ways that we can, uh, helping out in any ways. I always try to partner with with all the other nonprofits, agencies, right. together to say I'm not territorial. I think there's <laughs> there's plenty of human suffering out there for it to go help. around yeah. that everybody can help out together. And actually, when we unite together, we can accomplish far more than we can individually. Uh, and that community building is is key. Right. And I know that mm-hmm. the quote, together we achieve more. And that's that's so important. I think that's what really helps Montgomery County be successful as it is, is that, you know, a lot of organizations and companies and businesses work together to make this community so strong and so great. Um, and I know I was reading on your website, uh, preparing for this interview and I know you were talking about um it said on there about the the financial contributions to for for the counseling and um can you talk about like how how people pay for their services and Mm -hmm. and the 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 work that you do in that respect sure 
Well, we are, we're set up uh, as either self-pay or donor-funded for mm-hmm. all, all the services. We want anybody who needs to help to get the help. But we also want to keep the lights on. And right. I like to put food on my table for my kids and me uh, and, and my wife. And so <laughs> She's important, too. <laughs> yes, sorry. And so we ask those that are able to pay to pay. We have our standard rates. And if you're able to pay, to be able to do that so that others who aren't able mm-hmm. or are able to pay less. And so we have a, we have a tiered... Yeah. Uh, multi-tiered approach for funding uh, for people to be able to, especially over time. It kind of looks a lot like insurance and that over time, the longer you're, you're getting help from us, the less it's going to cost mm-hmm. over time to try to make up for. It's still going to cost. There's still nothing free. Somebody's right. going to pay for it. But we have uh, a growing number of, of donors and supporters who say, hey, I'd like to, help, to equip you to be able to help others who may be not able to or to send me into places like going into schools and going into other places where I don't charge for it Mm -hmm. but it still costs to resources and that and so on both on self-pay because we're not able to take insurance uh, as a nonprofit and the way we're set up uh, but to be able to anybody who wants help for them so self-pay and then donations and we have great some great supporters and I'm always looking for more people that are interested in making an impact in marriages and families and that. And so what are some of the current like businesses and nonprofit organizations that you work with? Uh, well, we attend Conroe First Assembly of God, it's on the north side of town. Um, I'm teaching the How to Avoid Falling for a Jerk this, this quarter in a Sunday school class for high school oh, and young cool. adults there. Uh, and the, the pastor, Pastor Maddox, allows me to do a lot of different things mm-hmm. in the church there to really try to help equip that. Many of the other churches uh, around the area is not just in the Assemblies of God. I'm ordained with the Assemblies of God. but a number of churches that are around the area that have been from from Mims Baptist, uh, from First Baptist here in Conroe, just trying to team together and help what we can what we can do together uh, to to try to build things up. Mm-hmm. Even some of the non faith based uh, counseling organizations saying that I refer back and forth to each other and trying to find what's the best person to help this person. Yeah. If I'm not the best person, I want to help them That's get great. to it. And so I'll refer to, to whatever agencies. And I always like to refer to, to a person rather than just a name. So I got to right. meet them. I got to know who it is. Building that network. To. And right. Just get to know and say, here's a person that can better help you and mm-hmm. send them there so they can get the best help. Great. That's, yeah. I think it's so important to have that network. And like you're saying, if you can't help them, you know someone who can. Right. Um, right. And so what are some of the other organizations that you are a part of in the community? Um, well, pretty active with our, with our church, with Conroe First mm-hmm. Assembly, uh, in both giving in, in many aspects of that. Uh, and then with the scope of, of the ministry and what we're doing, uh, we have a lot of involvement short term with many different places, many different churches, because right. uh, we travel around and either do the conferences and workshops and mm-hmm. churches and community venues and that. And so being able to to reach out uh, and have uh, pull out the list of the, the number of organizations <laughs> yeah, that I'm sure we've been able lot. to partner with uh, around town, uh, many of them that refer uh, to us for counseling, uh, many of them that we refer, especially the churches. Hey, if you're looking for a good church of any particular denomination, yeah. or refer to them. And having that there. network. Yes. That's so. great. And so, I mean, obviously the, the network aspect has, has been what's made part of what's made the center so successful. But in your opinion, what has led to the success of the Center of for Mighty Marriages and Families? Well, for every us, all of us that are involved in it, I think integrity to our calling and knowing why we're doing what we're doing. And then the, the, as, a, as a small and growing uh, nonprofit or business, mm-hmm. the, inte- the tenacity to, to fight for what's really important and right. to not forget that in, in the drive to try to get bigger to say what, what we're about and what's important to us, we won't sacrifice that to, to grow right. or to do other things. But putting those two together of, of an integrity that there are th- some things that are off limits for us in our growth. There's some things that are just right and there's some things that are just wrong. And we won't, uh, we won't cross the line and do something mm-hmm. right thinking that we'll gain something greater down the road because we know you ultimately won't. Uh, and having that, that foundation, I think, and then because of that, we, God's blessed us in that. They say when we right. honor him first and choose to do, uh, use his principles, then we're blessed by that. Yeah, having yeah. the priorities straight. It sounds yeah. like you yeah. guys do, so that's that's great. And then we were kind of talking about before, you know, how there's all there's all kinds of different counselors and organizations that that offer counseling. How do you stay relevant and ahead of the curve? Well, as a as a Christian organization, we we're accountable to God and to the whole body of Christ mm-hmm. as a whole. Uh, we strive to to remember in thought and action that um, 
we are not our client's savior. <laughs> that, that job was taken right. long ago, and we just work for him. Uh, but the principles that we were created for, I believe God created us for relationships. And when we live by those, uh, that sets us apart right there mm-hmm. from many organizations that have other, and there's a lot of great organizations that are out there. But staying uh, relevant is understanding the fundamentals. Is fundamentally human nature hasn't changed. Fundamentally, the building blocks of uh, healthy relationships mm-hmm. haven't changed. And so it's putting the, really the truths of what I say as a Christian, the truths of the Bible that it's relevant for today. Right. But presenting it in a way that you understand it mm-hmm. uh, and that how it applies to today and continuing to know what our culture is and right. understand what the, what the needs are changing. and how to present the truth that speaks to that specific mm-hmm. issue that does change uh, in many ways. Uh, and so that's the, the challenge and the excitement of right. it is that, is that there's always a, a learning and how to do it better, how to be able to present the truth better in a better way that will change their lives. And I'm sure the challenge especially comes because, like we were saying before, society is always changing, culture is changing, and with each client that you have, they learn and understand in different ways than, than the next person. Right. And so finding out how to communicate and, and speak to them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I know you were talking a lot about how you got started and, and where you are now, but you know we all know business is full of successes and learning opportunities. Right. What has been the biggest <laughs> success and then learning opportunity for you? I think probably the biggest success we see regularly, and that is when we see a, a couple or an individual, somebody come in without hope. You mm-hmm. see them come in, and, and you've, we've all seen them. You see, you look in their eyes, and you see they just, they don't know how they're making another day. Uh, they just don't like each other if mm-hmm. they're married. And then after spending some time really dealing with the issues that they face, to see a light go on in them. When you introduce hope to them, and the, the biggest success would be that I get the opportunity to continue to regularly do that, and they leave the office uh, changed. You see right. hope in their eyes. You see, for me, that's success. It's not a size, but it's one life uh, one relationship changed uh, mm-hmm. by God's power and their their will, their free will to choose to do things right. Absolutely. Uh, and that's pretty incredible. And what and a rewarding it, experience. It is. And that we get to do it regularly. Yeah. And we get to see and that we're entrusted with that. We think it's a sacred honor for somebody to invite us into their life for a time and share things with us that they may have never shared with anybody mm-hmm. else. Yeah. Um, and we take that very seriously. Absolutely. Uh, and it also it can't help but change us and enrich mm-hmm. us. Uh, and that's part of what we do. Um, and, and like Project Legacy is one of the things that, that is also a, a, a great uh, success is we're meeting with couples that have been married for more than a half century, 50 plus years, and have a strong marriage as viewed by other people uh, because it's by referral only into mm-hmm. the room. And we just ask them to tell some of what they've learned by being married more than a half century. That's really and For cool. me to be able to sit with, with couples and hear that. Uh, in fact, just up north in, in Willis, we have a couple that's been married 81 years, uh, Ralph and Mary Lou Riggs. Oh, wow. Uh, when you sit down and, and talk with them, I had the opportunity to sit in their living room last spring and hear about more than eight decades of marriage together. Wow. And they're still in love with each other. They're still, and hear that story and tell that mm-hmm. and see that, that you can have a strong marriage. Right. You can have it in more than a half century. Of, of strong marriage. Yeah, that's remarkable. That's, that's a exciting. long time. <laughs> success and trying to get that word out that it's mm-hmm. not just reserved for select few. It's those who are willing to work at it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's not always been easy. It's one of the, you mentioned learning opportunities. When we started off, uh, I wanted to save the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wanted to impact every marriage and family. And so when we started the ministry, I had about 24 focuses for the ministry. Right. I want to do all this. I want to impact every marriage that's out there. And it kind of ground to a halt because I, I was so spending much. a half hour yeah. I'm going to talk with the pastor and tell about the ministry. It take a half hour for me to try to tell him about it. And I lost him after the first five mm-hmm. minutes because it was just too broad. And it's like, I'm going to try to world, end world hunger. <laughs> and well, how do you go about doing that? So we've had to narrow it down a lot more right. because we are just being overwhelmed. Yeah. But the need is so great. There's, a, there's so many unhealthy relationships out there. But how are we? How is the Center for Mighty Marriage and Families? What is our specific calling? And so it's been narrowed down from from 24 uh, down to the three core areas <laughs> yeah. that we have. That and that's important because it it's, can be very overwhelming. And right. so to have a narrow focus and make sure that you're staying on that path. So that's that's I'm glad you shared that. And before we wrap up, um, um, what, you know, what's one piece of business advice that you feel is important for every business owner or nonprofit to know? I would say know why you're doing what you're doing mm-hmm. and remember what's most important. 
not to sacrifice the greater things, right? your family, your friends, your integrity, to get the lesser things, maybe recognition or money or prestige mm -hmm. that can disappear in a moment. Uh, yeah. But, but remember, and I think when it comes out to it, those organizations, those businesses, those nonprofits that remember that and stay true to that, that stability when everything else is fall, uh, flailing in the wind, yeah. gives them staying power that, that say, people say, I want to be, I want to go to that business. I know there's, I can count on them. Mm -hmm. I can trust them. They have that there. Uh, and so know why you're doing what you're doing and remember what's important. That's great. That's great advice. Well, thank you so much, Sean. I appreciate your time. Um, and that's it for Mind Your Business. I want to thank Ryan, Sean, and John for spending the hour with me. Until next time, this is Cassandra Roshan with the Greater Conroe, Lake Conroe Area Chamber of Commerce saying so long for now and mind your business. Hey, everyone. This is Tina, your host from Retro Saturdays. I wanted to invite you to visit the Lone Star Studios here in downtown Conroe, Texas. We're all volunteers here, and we need your help in serving the Montgomery County area. Radio media is a fun field to be in. Lone Star Internet Radio serves Montgomery County with news, current events, local programming, and, of course, music. If you are interested in volunteering and sharing your talents in media, go to IRLoneStore.com and let us hear from you. Lone Star Internet Radio, serving Montgomery County from the heart of downtown Conroe.